Hello everybody and welcome to Renewable English. We are live and welcome back to Cultivating Changemakers lesson number five. Wow, five already. Um, I say already. It's been a while, hasn't it? This is our last lesson before the summer break. As you may see, I'm quite warm in here. This office is right at the front of my house, so it's very hot because the sun's coming straight through the window, but luckily I've got the blind down. So this is our last lesson until September. Don't worry, if you want to, jump on the page. You can go back and get materials to all of the other lessons. Um, and of course, you can watch the videos back whenever you want. Do go to renewableenglish.com forward slash cultivating dash changemakers. And that's exactly where you'll find today's lesson plan, today's uh, worksheet. And of course, the video will be uploaded straight after the lesson. So what do we have for you here? First of all, please find us, follow us like stuff, say it's great, say it's terrible, say whatever you want um, and whatever you think. You can find us here on YouTube, of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and if you feel generous, by all means, I'd say buy us a coffee. I do have a coffee here, as you see. Um, I also have a lovely water here as well, so the coffee's a bit warm, I think. So then, let us begin with lesson number five, all about change makers and inventions. It's called, if you need it, make it. And the person we're speaking to today is this, this wonderful gentleman here, we can see in the top corner, and his fantastic quote, um, we need to not have the end goal in sight. We need to play and have fun. And innovation will come out of that naturally. Hello there, Maggie. Maggie's arrived. Hi there. Hats off. I hope you're okay. I hope you are well. So this idea that we should be having fun and things will come out of it rather than only seeing what we need to achieve and getting to that. Obviously, it's nice to have some kind of target, but playing around is what will bring out the best in, in all of us. So... Today is all about inventions and inventors who have changed the world. So here are a few different inventions. My hat feels so uncomfortable in this heat. Here we have six different inventions. Um, we have a computer, we have a globe, we have a syringe, uh, we have a rocket propulsion system, we have an electric refrigerator, and we have a wireless communication device. Hmm. Hmm. So, which one do we think came first? Which one do we think came first? And guess what? I haven't labelled them because I feel that might give it away a little bit. Which one do we think came first? I'll give you a clue. It's a surprising one. So remember I mentioned there was a, a computer program, there's a syringe, there's a fridge, there's a globe, there's a rocket propulsion system, which is quite obvious the one it is, and there's a, a, a wireless uh, communication device. So I'll give you a drum roll. If you have the worksheet or you're watching back, please fill it in on the worksheet. If you want to press pause, you can press pause. If you're watching live, you can't press pause, I'm afraid. Uh, and the first one from 1843 is the first kind of computer and computer program. There you go. Uh, we will look at that a little bit more very briefly, very shortly. The next one from 1875, what do we think it could be? What could it be? Which is the logical next step? So after the first computer was invented, the first globe came about. The first globe, and then of course, 
if you can see over my shoulder, which you can't because oh, there we go. Uh, 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 there's a, a more recent globe in the background there. It actually lights up as well, so I'll call it my glow with a W, B, E, globe. But yeah, sorry. I know, it's not funny. Uh, and 1899 is when the syringe was invented. Before that, they could not administer any kind of injection with one hand. So this is the way that one, one person would be able to do this. Uh, and, and that's how they figured it out. The next one is 1914. What do you think it could be? Is it the rocket propulsion, the wireless communication, or the fridge? It is, of course. There's Estrella saying hello to everybody. Hello, Estrella. Uh, it is, of course, the electric fridge. The electric fridge was invented and created in 1914. Uh, leaving 1941 for the wireless communication system and 1974 obviously must be can't be anything else it is the rocket propulsion system the rocket propulsion system i think i said that right uh, so let's have a little think about the inventors what do we think the inventors of these wonderful uh, different devices and gadgets had in common. Hmm, what could they be? Estrella is having a lot of fun. She must be speaking to Alethea upstairs. Any ideas what we think they could be? So here we have another look at the inventions. Without the year they were invented. And I'm not going to ask you how many of these people you recognise, but I, don't, I think maybe one of these people you might recognise. Um, but can you see something they all have in common? These are all... Uh, hello there, Naveen. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. We're just looking through some famous inventions throughout time, all of which uh, were invented by different female innovators. Now you may have heard of Ada Lovelace, you may even have heard of uh, Hedy Lamarr, but it's unlikely we've heard of, of any of the other inventors that we have on there. So we are going to have a look at who did what and when. So we can see that the computer algorithm or the first computer was made by Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage as well. Uh, the globe, or globes as I put there, were invented by Ellen Fitz. Leticia Greer moved medicine forward leaps and bounds. That means a lot, leaps and bounds. Uh, by inventing the one-handed syringe. Um, Florence Parpart invented the electric refrigerator, which I'm very grateful for because it means my water is nice and cool in this insane heat. Um, Hedy Lamarr, also an actor from uh, Hollywood's Golden Age. Uh, wireless transmission, she was involved with that during the war. And then Yvonne Brill invented a, a space rocket propulsion system whereby two different fuels could be used at the same time. So it enabled satellites to fly. It didn't need uh, uh, a person on board to, to arrange the different fuel and, and fire it that way. So they are some wonderful inventors, as, uh, as Maggie has mentioned. They are great innovators, super smart, um, and not given a high enough place in our science books, I don't think. You know, we always look at the greatest inventions and everyone always says that, you know, Steve Jobs was incredible. And um, don't get me wrong, the iPhone was a great invention, a great idea. Um, and we talk about the internet and then we talk about the electric light. But we don't often talk about these other important inventions that have helped move us forward. And of course, they're inventors. I think it's about time we shouted it some more. So here are some of my favourite eco-ish inventions. In fact, these are my four, four of my favourite inventions of all time, regardless of their eco-ness or not. So which ones do you think are which? We've got a salad spinner, we've got edible tableware, a plantable pencil and a strawberry huller. 
What's a strawberry hull? Well, the hull of a strawberry is the bit where this, the stem comes out and it's white. So if you hull a strawberry, you remove that. You, you pull that out of the middle of the strawberry. You remove the heart of the strawberry. So any ideas, feel free to drop it on your worksheet, put it in the chat box, or if you're watching back, feel free to leave a comment. Oh, here we go. So the first one, um, we interviewed, in fact, the the inventor and the, the man behind Strudel's tableware in series one, talking about responsible production and consumption. Um, or maybe it was series two. Oh, I don't remember. I should have checked. I didn't check, though. Uh, he's got edible tableware, Strudel's edible tableware. So when you're finished at a party, you eat your bowl, you eat your spoon, you eat your coffee cup. All of these wonderful ideas that, you know, they can be used in high-end hotels and it can remove plastic waste and people can just eat their um, ice cream and then the ice cream cup afterwards. The next one, obviously, B, as I mentioned before, removing the heart, the strawberry huller. I love it. Saves on waste of strawberries as well. So that's how that is eco. We do not waste our strawberries. Um, Next up, we've got the plantable pencil. I think we can all see that one. This one is a lavender pencil. And at the end of it, they just put some seeds in there. So you plant it and then out grows something wonderful from your pencil. And, you know, why not? It seems pretty great to me that you're making something out of something you've used before. Fantastic. Hello there, Pratap. Nice to see you. And finally, probably my favourite invention the salad spinner oh it's so good isn't it great i mean you surely save on water from washing your vegetables um you can mix in your oil oh it's just this it's just brilliant it's just so good i absolutely love salad spinners up there on my list of favorites that is absolutely for sure so we're going to move on i say so an awful lot at the end of everything and the start of every next section i seem to say so anyway Moving on to the next section. We have an interview, and I've got the answers on the screen there. Woof! That could have been dangerous. That could have been dangerous. We are going to watch an interview with the incredible Fion Pereira. Um, he has invented many different things, uh, one of which has been part of our Eco Invention Showdown this week. Um, We'll show you who the winner of that was very soon. And it's a way of removing microplastics, 80% of microplastics from water. So um, we're going to watch here. We do have some questions. So the first time we watch, listen up with these different answers, these different questions. Sorry, I'll put them over here. And then the second time we watch, I'll put these down here. I'll put these down here so we can see them. So there are our six questions. We will watch twice and we'll go through with the answers very shortly. But we will be watching this video twice. So strap on in for the incredible Fion Ferreira, winner of multiple awards, um, inventor of many inventions. <laughs> He's just brilliant. Go and check him out at Fion.Ferreira on Instagram. Give him a follow. He, his inventions are just incredible. They're off the wall. They're off the hook. They're incredible. So here we go. Here's Fiona. Hi Fiona, thank speaking, you for joining us. Speaking very recently. Hi Fiona, thank you for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. You are many things, um, but I principally heard of you as an inventor. When I think of an inventor, my mind goes to, to Thomas Edison or, or I think of Rick and Morty. I think that being an inventor is not judged by what you invent or what you create but the mindset you have in solving problems through building new stuff to do that, or is just to enjoy building new stuff, even if it doesn't solve a problem. So who was your kind of inventing inspiration when you were younger? When I was younger, I would like to thank my parents for inspiring me to invent. They both uh, work in fields where they build a lot. My father builds wooden boats. My mother now actually has a model making company. They just showed me that if I wanted something, I could just build it. 
Because even now, when I overcome a problem or find a problem, there's no problem big enough that you can't try and build something to solve it. What would you say is your your favorite invention that you've invented? I am best known for my invention to remove microplastics from water. Uh, it's a device that can um, use a magnetic liquid to attract plastics from water, allowing me to remove them from water. Now, something we often ask in our English language classes, what's the most important invention of all time? I know it's an impossible question to answer, but it's a great one for debate in our classes. Perhaps one of the most important inventions is how we have developed our ability to communicate. In solving problems and gaining more knowledge as scientists, we need to communicate. And we have done this uh, through speaking, through language, but also through the ability to write um, and share ideas. My most important like physical invention, I think um, the use of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, basically how you can look at spinning nuclei of atoms to measure stuff. It really everything from an MRI scan of the brain to looking at microplastics in water can be done with that. And I think that it's a truly powerful technique. How can we as future change makers how can we get into inventing? You know, change makers can have so many different forms. I have found the niche of what I am good at. I also love the environment and want to do something for the better. And this was just the way that I could do it most. First of all, you need to ask yourself, well, what? What do you really enjoy doing? And then what do you really want to change? And if you can answer both of those questions with whatever is most suiting to you, I think that is the area where you should make change. Where can people go to learn more about you and what you're doing? Um, you can find me on Instagram at fian.ferreira, but also on my website, fianferreira.com. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, thank, thank you. so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Obviously, there was a bit of an error at the end with the subtitles there that will be corrected in the description box. Don't you worry. Here we go. So let's watch... Let's watch back again. Hi Bjorn and thank you for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. You are many things, um, but I principally heard of you as an inventor. When I think of an inventor, my mind goes to, to Thomas Edison or, or I think of Rick and Morty. I think that being an inventor is not judged by what you invent or what you create but the mindset you have in solving problems through building new stuff to do that, or is just to enjoy building new stuff, even if it doesn't solve a problem. So who was your kind of inventing inspiration when you were younger? When I was younger, I would like to thank my parents for inspiring me to invent. They both uh, work in fields where they build a lot. My father builds wooden boats. My mother now actually has a model making company. They just showed me that if I wanted something, I could just build it because even now when I overcome a problem or find a problem, there's no problem big enough that you can't try and build something to solve it. What would you say is your, your favorite invention that you've invented? I am best known for my invention to remove microplastics from water. Uh, it's a device that can um, use a magnetic liquid to attract plastics from water, allowing me to remove them from water. Now, something we often ask in our English language classes, What's the most important invention of all time? I know it's an impossible question to answer, but it's a great one for debate in our classes. Perhaps one of the most important inventions is how we have developed our ability to communicate. In solving problems and gaining more knowledge as scientists, we need to communicate. And we have done this uh, through speaking, through language, but also through the ability to write um, and share ideas. My most important like physical invention, I think um, the use of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, basically how you can look at spinning nuclei of atoms to measure stuff. It really everything from an MRI scan of the brain to looking at microplastics in water can be done with that. And I think that it's a truly powerful technique. How can we as future change makers, how can we get into inventing? You know, change makers can have so many different forms. I have found the niche of what I am good at. I also love the environment and want to do something for the better. 
And this was just the way that I could do it most. First of all, you need to ask yourself, well, what, what do you really enjoy doing? And then what do you really want to change? And if you can answer both of those questions with whatever is most suiting to you, I think that is the area where you should make change. Where? So there we go. Um, the wonderful Fionn Ferreira. So let's go through the, the Irish inventor Fionn Ferreira. Where, of course, was he from? Oh, that is a big old answer sheet, isn't it? Wow. That was unnecessarily large, Harry. Woo. He is, of course, from Ireland. The Irish inventor from Ireland. Uh, so, uh, and he mentioned his, his biggest inspirations at the start there. Um, he mentioned they were his parents who are both creating things. His dad uh, built wooden boats and his mum has uh, lots of models. And then the greatest invention of all time, move that there, there we go, you can see me again, my sweaty face in this insane heat. Um, the greatest invention of all time was how humans have developed communication abilities. Or, now I'm going to have to look at the answers for this one, uh, nuclear magnetic uh, resonance spectroscopy, obviously, um, which is something that's very important to his work. Uh, if you got that one, bonus credit, as it says there. Um, and then being an inventor is all about what? What do you think? Do you have it on your... Uh, answer sheets there. It's all about the mindset that you have, um, not how good your inventions are. Uh, Fionn's invention uses a what? A metal to remove microplastics? No, a magnetic liquid. And then to become a change maker, you need to find what you love to do and use it to make change. Seems obvious that last one, using it to make change. Now, as I mentioned, Fionn was part of a fierce uh, eco-inventors battle earlier this week um, over on our Instagram page, and we do have it here. So I'm going to try and commentate at story speed. So wish me luck. I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but here we go. Let's have a look at these stories. So here is his uh, ferrofluid plastic magnet, which um, can attract microplastics to the liquid, which is magnetic gulp, is a filter that you put on your washing machine that can stop microplastics going into the water system. Hula One is a way of vacuuming up the microplastics from the sand and stow it, don't throw it, is an, an invention, a project that was created where you put your rubbish in a tube and not throw it in the bin. And we saw the first one was one by the ferrofluid magnet, 67% voting for it over the gold filter. The second one was a draw, but we gave it to Sean Russell who showed up and voted. He was the inventor for stow it, don't throw it. So we, we then went into the final where we had a quick recap of what the two different things could do. You can see them on our highlights reel where you can pause it. Then here we went again with the votes and then I put the, then we put this up to tell us to come to here today and then I talked for a little bit because you know I was wearing this shirt at the same time that was this morning and then of course we have our winner the ferrofluid blah, 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 the ferrofluid magnet um the stoic don't throw it fought valiantly until the end but it was the way of removing microplastics from water that did it for our voters. So there you go. Do go over to um, Instagram and check that out. You can also see our caster chef. You can check who do we follow. You can have a look at our litter picks as well, going back a couple of years and just see how far along we've come. So congratulations, Fionn Ferreira. You did it. Um, <laughs> You did it. You were the champion. I've just seen the, the comments there. Maggie, thank you very much. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. This is just about the end of the lesson today. So do remember to give us a follow, like and comment on stuff. Uh, tell us what you're up to. And don't forget to join in with Ali's Litter Picks. Um, Ali's One in a Million campaign and hashtag One Million Litter Pick. Um, subscribe on YouTube and of course if you're feeling generous why not get us an iced coffee um, and that's so until September this is the last time I'm saying it, until the new school year here in the uh, northern hemisphere it's been a pleasure and I'll see you all in September <laughs>